Welcome back, Sims Complete Football family. I'm your host, Matt Sims, alongside Phil Sims, the wow. new giant. How you doing, Big Philly? Was this somebody from The Sopranos? Is that what that was? I guess so, yeah. I mean, it might as well, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. got to mix in a little Sopranos talk every now and then. Well, it was some, somebody that I think was Italian, and I think he was really heavy just with the voice you were using. Okay, yeah. Is that right? Would that Maybe. be right? Yes, possibly. Possibly. Okay. Yeah, You're a man. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, whatever we that's a great opening. Uh <laughs> let's go. Who are we gonna talk He's about right now? The first time ever. Phil Sims is speechless. I, I'm really proud oh, of Oh no, him. no. I don't it's uh, I'm never speechless. It's, I, just, <laughs> yeah. I just gotta be careful sometimes. But yeah, who are we gonna talk about, big man? Yeah, so the first uh this next quarterback that we're talking about is Michael Penix Jr. Big Phil, you got your phone on right now on vibrate on the desk? I mean, come it, on, you amateur. I mean, come on, it just you know, I don't know what to say. It's important. Uh, unbelievable. You know I, who did well, mute, it's, mute it. Come on. Well, it's important. I just got a call from the skin doctor, so be quiet. All right, mute the damn phone. All right, there you go. Up. It's hey, still wait. vibrating. Well, I can't hey, shut up. <laughs> Remember this. Remember this. I'm your father. You're my son. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's All go right. back now. Let's get it. Get it together. Michael oh. Penix Jr. There you go. Played at the yeah. University of Washington. What is your first thoughts about him? Quickly, <laughs> go. <laughs> you jerk. Yeah, it's all right. Michael Penix, uh, I mean, what's there to say? I mean, the guy's been in college for a better half of the decade. He's like the Van Wilder of college football sports, man. I mean, he's been in college okay. for six years. It's a joke. Don't worry. The, the young kids at home will know what I'm talking about. I was going to say right? Van Wilder. Yeah. Who the hell is Van Wilder? Not, is he, not is he running back for the 49ers? Not, you know, <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. But, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, so for Michael Penix, though, he really is just uh, – he, he's a unique prospect. I think the big thing that will come up, you know, multiple times right uh, throughout this process is obviously the injury thing, uh, but yeah. had a phenomenal year this year. His throwing is as impressive a, as anyone that you'll watch in this draft. And I, I just, you know, was wowed by him multiple times, too, by his accuracy down the field this past year and right. his ability. Yeah, there you go. Straighten up those glasses. Yeah, I know. I got crooked. Yeah. Well, I got a yeah. crooked head, so <laughs> – Gotta be careful. Yeah, that's apparent. But but yeah, you were you were you know, wow a lot his, a lot of wow yeah. moments though by by yeah. his throwing ability. You know, what were some of the things that that you saw from his film? Well, a couple things. You know, um, the fact I remember when Indiana University recruited him, it was like I thought they had a good quarterback there, and yeah. this kid come in, Michael Penix. I said, wow, that's not right. They're playing him over the guy last year. It was really good. And then I saw him play a little bit, and I went, oh, oh, he's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, his throwing, even back then, six years ago, I can remember the first game he played. You know, always a half empty stadium in Indiana. I'm sorry. Uh, so it's never a good look. But damn. it just, yeah, I know, damn. But he made some <laughs> throws. I went, wow, this kid's got some arm. And then it's like he's gone. And then yeah. he resurfaces at Washington. But let me, here's what I think, and I know you know I'm going to, I was telling you about this. Let me read what I wrote because it's a lot. His greatest strength, of course, that's his arm. He can make all the thro throws. The defense is secondary. You better be afraid when he's on the field because he can throw it when he's being chased 65 yards like it's nothing. Um, he can make every play there is to make on the field. That's his greatest strength. What's his biggest curse, Matt? His arm strength. The fact that he, that's exactly right. So why <laughs> – his arm strength is a curse almost. You know, he, he he's there's nothing he sees that he doesn't like. Yeah. And it oh, everything opened up in front of me. I can run. Well, no, I got a chance and I'm gonna go ahead and rip it and throw it. So, you know, waiting on things or somebody to come open instead of going through the read sometimes, he doesn't do that because he doesn't have to. He's right. looking for very small windows and and he can drop his arm, he can do all that too. Uh, you you name the throw, he can do it. And and what the other the other negative, just one that I noticed, especially during the playoffs, he would if the first guy wasn't open, sometimes his feet got set and he stayed there. And now he's just waiting, and then he's just going to manipulate his arm and make the throw, whatever it has to right, be. Right, right. So and it was I wrote it down a couple of times watching him play. Don't let your feet get stuck. I, and I would say this as I'm saying, you know, not to contradict myself, but just to get this point out. I watched three of his games yesterday. Just to let me refresh one more time. What did I miss? Didn't miss. 
And you know what? He ran the ball a little more than I expected. In other words, he scrambled. And I went, oh, gosh, I, I hadn't really paid attention to it. But I saw it, and it made me feel better about who he was really as a quarterback, the fact that he ran and picked up five and six yards here and there for his offense. He definitely does it a little bit more than I feel like we remember, right, right. as we kind of look back on his film this year because – you just get so enamored with some of these throws that he made versus Texas, right? Even in Oregon State in like the downpour, like the fact that he could throw the ball so accurately and powerful oh. down the field in a torrential downpour is great. It was, he threw it so damn good they couldn't even catch the ball. Thank you. Know? you. That's and what I was going to say. It was unbelievable. But, but the throws throw versus Marcus. Texas, the Texas throws were, were unbelievable. Some of the throws that he oh. made versus Oregon the first and the second time were absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, the one thing, like, I totally agree with you on that, though. You know, his greatest strength is his greatest weakness, right? His ability to throw from on his back foot at, with people around him yeah. when he's surrounded and crowded. He still has the ability to create a great, great arm angle, great technique, and just whip the football. Dude, dude damn near throws it underhand sometimes yeah. because of the way he gets stuck in the pocket. So those will be things that I think will translate extremely well to the NFL world. You know, it, I, I yeah. yeah, go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say the other thing, and, you know, th this is, this will get rid of one of those cliches we hear all the time. Yeah. You know, hand size is just that's overrated. Well, no, it's not. You, you know, to sometimes to be a really powerful thrower, you got to be able to just, oh, you know, to manhandle the football. Right. And his his hands, I think at the senior bowl, they were almost 11s. Yeah. I'd heard all year long, but it was close, 10 and three quarters. But you can see that in the way he throws, and it's who he is, that he can just hold the ball and he just can control it and flick it with his hand and his arm, you know, probably better than anybody can in the draft. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that's a unique thing. That's why hand size, you know, most big time throwers, power throwers, I'm talking about, dang, get my. Power throwers <laughs> almost knocked it off. Power throwers have big hands. Yeah. Or they grip the football extremely small. One of the two. That's the way you do it. Yeah. And let's talk about that too, because he is him and Caleb Williams, I would say, are the two best hand throwers no in close. this draft. No right. And, and yes. what do we mean by that? That means that he can uh, essentially like almost get ready to throw it, then decide it's not the throw. And mid motion, still be able to kind of like flick the football, and manipulate it in a, in a very short space with really just you yeah. know his overall hand strength and flexibility, yes. and, and that's something that to me he excels at more so than anyone else, other than maybe Caleb Williams. And uh, you know it's it's really just like a, a unbelievable trade I think to have because now what right when it's you're gift. when you're looking at him. If you're Seattle and you're interested in getting a quarterback that if he's there late, you know, why not? This guy is going to be able to throw it in the rain. We've seen him do it here at Washington the past yes. two years. Why not get him? He's going to be able to endure all the weather and the issues that we have. Even like a place like Denver, you know, it's like, all right, it's dry. Wind. It's cold. It's windy. This is a quarterback that will be able to endure the weather and, and, and be able to prosper in those type of situations. Let me let me say this. I'll make it quick. Is just an analogy. Take a baseball in your hand and you can just stand there and do whatever you want with it, right? Right. Well, that's almost what he's doing. Yeah. And some of these guys are big and they, they can just – they overpower the size of the football. Yeah. And uh, the other guy that does it pretty well, uh, shockingly – was when I was watching it again yesterday, I was watching Bo Nix, you know, especially in a red zone, it got tight. He did a lot of just, all he did was use his wrist and hand to make some throws into tight coverage for touchdowns. I was like, right. really impressed. Didn't You don't see it in the open field too much. Yeah. But when they get inside that 10, that's where quarterbacks can, you know, dodge a little bit and just, you know, try to flick the ball in between defenders. And you, you brought up three guys that do it pretty well. We also so what, talked about uh, J.J. McCarthy, too, and his ability to throw back shoulder footballs really well. Yeah. Now, you know, everyone throws a back shoulder ball really, really well until you watch Michael Penix's film. And then you watch <laughs> his film and you realize that this dude does it at an, an astronomical rate with his success. I mean, him and Roma Dunze mastered the art of – it, it's not a it's not a 50 50 ball it's a yeah. it's it's a completion every time i mean it really was roma dunze one of the highest catch rates as far as contested throws all season 
part of that was because Michael Penix was just an absolute assassin with his accuracy down the field, especially to the sideline and some of those back shoulder go routes that they threw just so consistently the power too. I mean, dude was throwing this six feet off the ground, you know, uh, from his back foot with people around him. And, and that's where to me, I get excited when I watch Michael Penix, where I see generational type talent and throwing you know, well, because of his long arms and big hands and his ability to push the football down the field that way. Yeah, well, if you want to you want to watch a game and just have some laughs, all the fans out there, get USC and Washington playing each other. Just like it's it's unbelievable. Yeah, I thought I really I thought they were playing flag football, but <laughs> it's it was unbelievable. Yeah, it was just constant. But well, whatever, so it was great. The the other thing that I think Matt that we noticed, of course, Texas in the playoffs. Yeah, uh, he was very good. He made three or four throws that were they. That's all you saw on TV. And right. I think we judged him, and they caught me judging him on those plays that I want to see this against Michigan. Yep. Well, we didn't see it against Michigan. Different defense in many, many ways, and um, and you know it was uh, it was much tougher for him. And, and but this, but, it's, but let me point. get to this. Go Hold ahead. On. Yeah, but I, what I was getting to, he had to stand there and got hit. His body, what does that does that bother you at all? The fact that he is really trim, um, you know, small legs, whatever. I noticed it more when he was playing Michigan than anything else. The the hits he was taking um, had trouble finding guys open, I guess, because they're good. And yeah. I I think this his size in the uniform kind of hit me during that game too. Yeah, well, that's where. You know, he's got a similar frame to Jaden Daniels, right? And even yeah. when he was coming out of high school into college, he was labeled as a dual threat. He was considered yes. a dual threat quarterback at Indiana. Now, we don't really see that a ton at Washington. We see him scrambling for good yards, but we don't see him, you know, obviously doing what things like Jaden Daniels does, mm -hmm. right? But he does move extremely well in the pocket. I think the, the Texas victory alone, uh, I know Washington was, you know, touted as one of the best offensive lines in the country, but Michael Penix, I think, was a one of the main reasons why they were right. He his ability to make the guy that's unblocked or that yeah. one in the middle, you know, especially there was a few that were right down Broadway running right at him, and he had the ability, you know, like a matador to like oh lay him and then reset and just fire a missile, you know, down the field. And that's where I think, like, for him, he is a great neutralizer to free runners, to people that obviously are losing on their blocks at the line of scrimmage. And for him, for him to quickly reset and then also to use his arm flexibility and to still throw the football down the field powerfully, to me, is another, again, why I get very excited when I watch his film and, and that yeah. translation to the NFL because we know how important that trade is to be a great NFL quarterback. Well, let me say this. Two years, over a thousand throws at the University of Washington. Sacked <laughs> only <laughs> sacked only sacked sixteen times. So that yeah. says that you know the fact too. You know he will get rid of the football and did it many many times against Michigan and Texas in the playoffs and during the year. Instead of taking a sack, you know he's not worried about the number. He throws it away. Yeah, and he doesn't waste any time throwing it away. So yeah, that's important to think. Now people say, well, all quarterbacks do that. Uh, no, they don't. There's right. many quarterbacks that will try to extend the play because they don't want an incompletion. They're playing numbers, you know, even in college. So, you know, yeah. try to protect and, it. And, and I'm not, you know, this was something too that, that we had discussed in a previous conversation, you know, after the Michigan game, you were saying, you know, I don't know, my opinion of Michael changed a little bit. And mm -hmm. I said, I, I'm not going to punish him uh, for struggling against the best defense that I had ever seen in college football the entire year, you know, right. and, and everybody knows too, I was kind of a Michigan hater this year. Right. And you know, Hey, somebody's got to, right. You know, it was Michigan wow. versus everybody. So I was part of it, okay. but uh, you know, I, I just thought that Michigan had a NFL defense. They really did. They had an NFL style defense. They had NFL talent. Uh, they might not have a lot of guys that are going to go on like the top, you know, few picks, but you're going to have a lot of guys that are going to be playing on Sundays uh, the next few years. And that's where, like, I, I'm not going to punish him for struggling against what I thought is one of the yeah. best defenses in all of college football, the way that they played, the style that they played. Well, listen, all these quarterbacks we've talked about, we're going to talk about Caleb Williams here coming in the future. I'm just going to give one hint. He couldn't do anything against Notre Dame. Nothing. Yeah. Because – 
the pressure, the coverage, the opportunities weren't there. And excuse me, that'll be, well, we'll talk about that. It'll be something you have to deal with. Knowing when you're playing these defenses, that is really, really tough. Yeah. Well, then understand the circumstances and be happy with maybe hitting half of your passes or whatever it is. Right. Knowing how to adjust when you're playing a team that's better than you. Yeah, so. and, and that's something that I think you kind of learn more in the NFL, right? Yeah. I mean, let's just face it. College, you know, with the quarterbacks that we're talking about, some of the coaching is good and some of the coaches is average. Now, I would say yeah. that for Michael Penix, he was in an environment that I think allowed him to learn how to play uh, you know, the quarterback position properly. That I think they did run a good amount of pro schemes and thought processes, especially in the yeah. red zone area too. And they also did a good job of keeping it simple for a guy that's just as talented as he is too and making sure that he could just execute and throw those one-on-ones. But uh, yeah. as far as decision-making goes, were you impressed with, you know, his decision-making and, and his consistency as far as that goes for the position? Yes, yes. I thought he always went to the side where the – uh, defense told him. In other words, it, it it's a one-two. He didn't get off of things too quick. He read. He took his time, read it out, and of course, he moved around a lot of times to you know to have those throws too. Right. Uh, when I looked at Washington's offense, so I'm going to go back to that. I thought he did have some pro concepts. I wasn't overly like, wow, I really like this a lot. Yeah. But the, the offense had caught me, and we're, we talked about it already. That was really pro oriented and a great learning ground, and that was LSU. That to me, that was the best offense that I've watched just for the quarterback. Yeah. You agree or disagree with that? No, I do. I think it was really good. You know, I just, I think for, you know, we're getting this discussion. Yeah. Again, for these quarterbacks, I am not going to, you know, devalue the skill sets they have because no. of the environment that they were in. So I think for Michael yeah. Penix, they did a lot of good things offensively. I think they, you know, obviously they could have done more to prep him for the NFL, but they also did enough to make sure that they were taking advantage of their great receiver skill set, their great quarterback play, solid offensive line play. And, you know, I think that he's learned enough through his six years of college football to be able to be prepared no you know, to play in the NFL level. You know, and look, and I think that experience is important. Man, I never judge the, any quarterback – on his receivers, the system, the score, uh, the re whatever. I don't. I'm judging him. Yeah. And I understand the circumstances, so I judge that way accordingly. Right. And uh, so, yeah, I would never hold it against them when they go out there. When you get your butt kicked, you're getting your butt kicked. And yeah. there's not much you can do about it sometimes. The quarterback, oh, I, I'll carry us through this whole mess that we have, even though we're no good. <laughs> well, that doesn't happen. So, as an evaluator for you, if you were the general manager of football team, would you be very concerned with his injury history? Yes. It yes. would bother you. Uh, well, it's going to make me look into it big time. One okay. is injury history, but also the fact that, um, you know, his size, just okay. the fact that he's trimmed. So I'll look into that. Will that me? could that be the turning point and saying yes and no? Uh, probably not. I think his health is – he has shown that these two years. And uh, his play in the field speaks for itself. It's its there. And if you're – i we'll go into this real quick because I want to get on the next guy. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if I'm drafting him, again, I'm not drafting because I think or hope he's going to be our day one starter or week five. I'm drafting him strictly as a second-string quarterback to get him ready there and just let it build from there and see what you get. Yeah, you know, so and he he is listed at 6'3, 213. Right. Uh, you know, his hands will probably be close to being the biggest hands at the combine, or you know, whenever you know yeah. he's gets measured for that. Now, as far as you know, for him and his sake and his future and all that kind of stuff, how would you value him a, as a draft pass prospect? Like what round? Is he is he oh. a second round quarterback? Is he a first round quarterback. What do you think as far as that goes? I'm gonna guess and think. I think he will go in the second round. He won't go in the first. Okay. Uh, again, when you pick him in the first, that's telling everybody that here's our guy. Right. You know. No, I think he's gonna go in the second, and that's not a slander to him at all. The road he has traveled, the injuries, everything about it, it, it tends to put you there. And, it's, and now they're looking for guys to run more, even though he moves around enough for us. But it's not what a lot of teams would want. So right. I think he's hey, 
man, there's many teams. If you like to throw the ball, then he's going to be a really, really good backup as an NFL quarterback to start. Right. I think like a lot of these guys always will get a chance sooner or later to be a starter on the teams. You know, the big thing now in the NFL, getting that chance to start, it's a short window. Yeah. And you got to hit it when you go in there. So, right. No, uh, you're yeah. right. I, 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 I'll be very surprised if he doesn't go in the second round. Okay. All right. And, uh, you know, that's that's really all I got from Michael Penix Jr. Uh, I, again, super impressed with his skill set, really excited for his career in the NFL. I was a huge fan of him this year. I'm a huge fan, too, of just, you know, really this is a great class of all quarterbacks that have been through a lot of adversity and kind of battled through it and, and, you know, have overcome it, too. So I I love those kind of stories for these QBs because I think it is important because the NFL is a whole nother world. And. There's there's a lot of adversity waiting for you in the NFL. I'll tell you that much. So um, it's it's going to be great. But that's all we got from Michael Penix. We'll be back with another QB breakdown here soon on Sims Complete. I'm Matt Sims with my co-host Phil Sims. We'll see you wow. next time.